Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew, and what I have for you today is Ranger Handbook Survival Kit. Stand by. All right guys, so today's video is gonna be kind of different. We're just gonna talk and discuss our Ranger Handbook Survival Kit, talk about some of the other things that kind of led us to this. I'm out here doing a bunch of different kind of smaller projects and it led me into the Survival Kit and so I wanted to put a video together for you guys to kind of go over this. I have two Ranger Handbooks in my collection. This first one right here that's not taped up, spiral bound, open to our survival chapter is my Ranger Handbook from the 82nd Airborne Division's pre-Ranger course. Still have my certificate of achievement for graduating that course. It was extremely tough. It's like the first phase of Ranger school out there at Camp Mosley at Fort Bragg. And 250 of us started. Of the 40 that graduated with me, about 20 of us or so actually made it through Ranger school. And so this other Ranger Handbook I have right here, taped up, it's got the Illume tape, acetate over top, so I can write on this at nighttime with a map marker. And you'll even notice that it's got my roster number on the side, roster number 178. That was the 178th student out of approximately 400 or so. And I only have one roster number because I only had to go through Ranger School once. Still got my orders here authorizing the wear of the Ranger tab. And then on the back from graduation from my graduating class almost 10 years ago, a little over. First Ranger tab given by Ranger Joe's, which is a tactical and law enforcement shop right outside Fort Benning Gate. And that's that's where. On the topic of bona fides, here's my SEER school, level C, high risk, certificate, graduation. All right, so one of the projects I've been working on is camouflaging some gear. This is a Blackhawk brand ammo carrier or front rack. It's got four double mag pouches and then two kind of utility pouches left and right. And decided to spray paint this up. Got the magazines for it, and these used to be Coyote Tan. And so spray painted these and applied a little bit of a pattern to them to just darken them up, get them camouflaged, and they did the same thing with this vest. So how we apply camouflage to any of our gear that we're gonna set up. When we do this, we can do any kind of pattern we want. There's really no wrong answer. And you'll see here on the sustainment pouch or utility pouch, kind of did a spray and pray method with different colors over top just to kind of conceal it a little bit better or provide a little bit more camouflage to that but a great technique is to buy one of those cheap construction vests it's gonna have that mesh material we can place this right over our pouch and now what we do is start with some sort of light color this is smoky beige and we can just do a couple of pops in a line we don't need too much but we want to make sure we get around that pouch to the outside next we're going to use a light green camo color i'm just going to go over it doing the same technique just a couple of sprays. And then with our darker color that we have here, dark green, just do some basic lines, kind of like tiger stripes or whatever we want to do. Doesn't really matter. And then once we're done, all we have to do is pull it off. You can see now we have that great digital pattern. This looks really good, really cool. You notice we also sprayed inside the pouch. So now everything's camouflaged, it looks really good. We can put this down and then do the actual same thing to the top of the pouch as well. But we'll let this dry. The best part about this is that if we don't like the color and we don't like how we spray painted our magazines, we can re-spray paint everything again and do a different pattern or a different technique. You can see we've even done that to our knife sheath and spray painted the knife sheath, spray painted the back, and we have this Velcro strip right here. This is designed to go into an urban bug out bag or just kind of a concealed bag in a concealed pouch that has that hook tape or pile tape. You slap it on there, it sticks, and then you can grab your knife, pull it out, put it back, and then zip up that secret pouch so nobody knows it's there. And since I've got these projects going on and wanted to share them with you guys, one of the things was, you know, building up this kit and adding to it besides just the ammo and the magazines that are inside, building up these utility pouches and demonstrating the techniques for building a survival kit in accordance with the Ranger Handbook. And a lot of the information that's taken from the Ranger Handbook or is put into the Ranger Handbook, more precisely, is from other survival manuals, SEER manuals, evasion manuals. And they take that information, put it in here to the Ranger student, not only that student, but as well as any service member who carries the Ranger Handbook or has access to it can read it, get that 
information, jot down some notes, and then take it back and adapt to their own kit. And so there's a million ways to do this, but this is just a basic outline on how we build the survival kit. And it comes in three levels. And so we're gonna start talking about that first level. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna read that first paragraph of the survival kit section, chapter 14, page 14-3, paragraph 14-10 in the Ranger Handbook, and you're gonna get a better idea of the mentality in building a military survival kit. So check this out. Survival kits. Upon finding yourself in a survival situation, you will be required to provide for your most basic needs, water, food, fire, shelter, medical aid, signaling, and protection. This will be accomplished by using the resources you have on hand, those that may be found, or constructed. The more detailed your survival kit, the less scavenging or constructing you will have to do. Some examples of individual survival kits follow. All items should be small, portable, and most importantly, multi-purpose. Now that should give you an idea of the mentality when building a military survival kit is that we have to carry more because we won't be able to actually construct things or scavenge things from the field. We need to have them on us, especially in a non-permissive environment while trying to avoid detection. All right, so we're gonna start with our level one kit and I'm gonna read you exactly word for word what it says in the Ranger Handbook for level one survival kit. So level one kit carried or on individual should consist of at a minimum a knife, some form of fire starter, such as a lighter, matches or flint striker, a watch, signal mirror, and some 550 cord. And so that's just at a minimum of what we can put in our pockets or what is recommended for our survival kit. And so here we have just that minimum. These items right here are the exact items I carried in my pockets as part of SEER training. Now our first item is going to be just a basic knife. And this is a Benchmade Griptilian that I've had for years and years. You can tell it's pretty worn out up here near the tip. All that black has come off. We've got that serrated portion on the blade. Not a big fan of serrations on blades like this anymore. It's got a good grip. This is a good utility knife. We can actually change out the blade on this if we need to with a new blade. I've taken a file and filed off the spine to give it that 90 degree so we can use it with a ferro and start a fire. It's just a good all-around utility knife that's small and goes in our pocket that we can carry. Now, this Benchmade knife is great. However, there are a couple other knives. One knife that's kind of grown on me as a survival instructor is just the Ranger Grip 78. This is the Pathfinder version and it's made for the instructors and people that uh, purchase items from the school specifically, but specifically for Pathfinder instructors. It's got that large blade, extremely large blade with a really big saw, and it's got that reamer or that awl on it that we can use for bushcraft as well as survival, but this would be great in a kit. In fact, I've got two of these, and I put one in this 1050 kit that's gonna go in our rucksack as part of our rucksack kit or assault kit, which is spare items and extra items inside. Next, we just have that ferro rod for our fire starter. In the Ranger Handbook, we can carry lighters as well, matches or any sort of fire starter. And we have just a lighter here with tape. Another way we can enhance this is by taking a lighter with a 550 cord lanyard and tying it off to our chapstick once so we don't lose these smaller things when we're out walking around. The tape again acts as a flame extender, but then we have this chapstick. We can use this and apply it to tinder to act as a flame extender as well, something like a field dressing. Or we could take some cotton and place it right underneath the cap, something like that. So we have cotton right in there that's already soaked with petroleum jelly or the chapstick, and we can use this to get a fire going as well. Just another technique. It's like one of my ranger instructors told me in the Florida phase, always have a knife, way to start fire and a snack in your pocket. Next, we have that watch. This is just a G-Shock XL OD Green. If you guys want any of the gear you see in this video or you want to check it out, you can go to my store. I'm pretty sure I updated my storefront at Amazon, link down in the description section so you guys can find all this stuff, check it out, shop around, and figure out what you want to get or if you don't want it. The G-Shock here, you notice this is digital as well as analog. The reason it is digital and analog is so we can use it not only for operations to be on time and all that kind of stuff, but then the analog watch we can actually use to find cardinal directions using the watch method. All right, and so I'll leave a picture up of that from the manual so you guys can take a look. But we have that watch. Next we have just a hank of 550 cord. This is about 10 feet, maybe 15 feet of paracord. And when we're wearing OCPs, we have larger cargo pockets so we can throw this stuff in our pockets and have a little bit more material. So carry a lot of it as much as you can. And then finally, that signaling mirror. We have that signaling mirror 
that we can use to alert search and rescue. We just flash that signaling mirror that's seen from upwards of 100 miles away for rescue personnel to get picked up by friendly forces, but we got instructions on the back. This is one of the glass ones and we put a lanyard on it. And then it also came with this kind of foam wrapping or pad. And so we just took 100 mile an hour tape, wrapped it, so we can put the mirror in here so that mirror is protected, but then we're also protected from breaking glass should we take a slip or a fall. You'll notice that they're very basic. We have a cutting tool, a way to start fire, a watch to keep time as well as give us cardinal directions and land navigate, and then cordage and some sort of signaling device. Other things we could add to this, we would probably want to have some sort of flashlight or headlamp or some sort of candling device that we can use to see in the dark. Probably want to have medical aid items as well. So we have a field dressing, just as an example. We could throw that in there, Israeli dressing, it doesn't matter. We could use the cotton inside this field dressing along with our feral rod to get a fire going or even a tourniquet to stop severe bleeding from a catastrophic wound to a limb. Probably want to have some sort of lanzetic compass or some sort of compass that we can use. We can also add another nighttime signal. This is just that strobe way to signal at night. The point being with all this stuff is that we have our minimum kit of what's prescribed in the Ranger handbook for survival kits that we can start to learn from. Too easy to make something like this and then throw it in our pockets. Now from here, this is level one. Let's talk about level two. All right, so here's our level two kit. So once again, we'll read directly from the manual, give you guys an idea. So level two kit carried in the flick or a rack, waterproof container, water purification tabs, two feet square aluminum foil, fishing kit to include line hooks and weights, medical supplies, snare wire, signaling devices, compass, and survival knife. And that's what goes in this kit right here. So we have a kit that is in a waterproof container. And you can see we've camouflaged this up with our paint. And this is to complement our level one, that pocket knife, that 550 cord, our watch, the mirror, and then a way to start fire. This is gonna have more items in it. So let's take a look inside. It's a cheap container. It's got three latches on it, which I really like because if you overpack it like I do, it'll still be somewhat secure, although the waterproof integrity may be lost a little bit. We open it up and we've got our kit right there that we're ready to grab. And ready to use. So we're just going to start right on top. We got water purification tablets. These are the type that are typically issued. Take two tablets, put it in one quart of water, shake it, wait 30 minutes, bleed the cap, and then you've got fresh drinking water. The assumption is that with our rack that this kit is supposed to go in, we still have our canteen cup and set. So we have a way to carry water. And then now with chemical means, we can actually treat that water to make it safe to drink. Chemical tablets like this, very easy, quick method to use, especially if we're on the run. Next, we just got a spool of wire. This is about 24 gauge wire. This is from a trip wire set for an early detection system. You just take this wire, string it across a path. Somebody hits the wire like that, sets off the flare or the early alert system. You can use this for snares to go after game if we're out for a long time or improvisation as well. Next, just a whistle, great auditory signal. Next, just a simple aerial flare so we can alert air crew and have just another means of actually signaling for rescue. Next, we have just a fishing kit. This fishing kit is just hooks, line, sinkers, and we actually put one bobber in here spray painted it so it's not a bright color so we could actually use this and cast from the shore small fishing kit in this medicine bottle that's green and we could probably spray paint this entire thing camouflage and then have it as part of our kit as well next we've got a multi-tool now with a multi-tool this is probably going to be the best for a military survival kit we can manipulate things and construct things and then whatever we scavenge and find we can use this tool it's got the main blade a file has the reamer or the awl on it just like that swiss army knife got a serrated blade as well as a saw can opener screwdriver this is going to be that number one tool or survival knife that we put in a kit like this next we have a medical dressing this dressing is a smaller version of that field dressing we just have that backup medical aid device right there that field dressing to go over a major injury or laceration to help stop blood and we have a button compass i've put out a lot of reels lately on button compasses and how we can use them and make them a little bit more accurate for us especially when trying to get precise directions and azimuths and a lot of people like them a lot of people don't like them have a compass in your pocket like that lensetic compass don't actually try to 
to rely on a button compass except for cardinal direction. With those reels, at least there are ways that we can take this thing and turn it into a highly accurate compass, good to go. Next, we've got a panel. This is one of those aviator panels. It's like the silk. I actually have one out of the package right here, and it's just something like this. This balls up very quickly to throw in the pocket, and these are designed to go in the knife pocket on the flight suit for aviators. It's another excellent kit item to have because it packs down so easy, and we can place this in our pocket, and you can see the effect it kind of has. All right, next we have just medical aid devices again. These are gonna be just small bandages and small medical aid items. Alcohol prep pads, as well as band-aids, and some combination first aid antibiotic and burn ointment, but having bandages, especially these each type of bandage that have the four legs on them, these are great for fingertips and for those hard to reach areas, especially in between the knuckle. Clean the injury first with alcohol prep pads. We can also use these alcohol prep pads as emergency fire starters because it's isopropyl alcohol. It will take a spark, multi-purpose as well. And then the last item inside of our container is just two feet square of Aluminum foil. Now there are a lot of different uses for aluminum foil. You can use this primarily for cooking. In a recent video, I cooked deer heart and a lot of different uh, vegetables with some oil and butter and seasoning in aluminum foil. You can use this as improvisational fire starter, the prison match. You can also use this and construct just a basic container. And we have just a basic cup here. This thing will actually hold water. And then now that we have that water in there, we can place this, support it with a couple of rocks or something in the fire and boil water. At tinfoil, this is the primary use, is to construct a viable container to hold water and then to place it over a fire and be able to treat that water via boiling to make it safe to drink. And then this carry kit would go right inside one of our utility pouches on our flick. And we still have room for a few extra items in here. It's a pretty small pouch, so it's not gonna hold a lot for just our purposes, but you can see that packs up pretty nice. It's in a tough container. We have other room in this sustainment pouch and that's overall part of our kit. But that level two kit is right there. And then our level one items are gonna be in our pockets. And you can see how everything kind of flows together. Now, like we mentioned earlier, our level three kit is going to have all the items from our level one and level two, plus a few extras. So if real quick, let's read over level three in the handbook. Level three kit, carried in the assault pack or rucksack, waterproof container with more of the materials listed in level one and level two kit, plus shelter making materials, poncho, tarp, bungee cords, or space blanket, plus a hatchet or a saw, which I love. I'll carry both probably. Let's just dive into this. I'm not gonna bore you with a tarp or a poncho. Again, recommendations when we threw this together. Like we talked about, we have that Swiss Army Ranger Grip 78, that large blade, large saw, and especially that reamer or that awl for drilling, improvisation, as well as fixing clothes or sewing new things. We have a small button light that is white. We can use for a signal as well. Again, additional signaling material. Wire for traps. A small multi-tool. This could even go in our number two kit or even in our pockets. Just something small we can use to manipulate things. It's got a bunch of different tools. A chem light with some paracord wrapped around it to make a buzzsaw signal great for nighttime or during hours of limited visibility for search and rescue signaling. A whistle. We've got a commando chainsaw that we can use for taking down large material. Really good for survival, even one like that. Got a small fishing kit. This has bobbers, hooks, a razor blade, sinkers in it, plus a couple of different lures. To go along with that, we have just two spools of fishing line. This is, I believe, 30 pound, and this is 10 or eight pound test line. Two different types, monofilament with green for a little bit of camo, and then a clear, stronger line to go with our fishing kit. We've got a small film canister. This is filled with cotton balls and Vaseline for tinder. We've got survival matches, just stormproof, weatherproof survival matches. And these are actually coated with a little bit of wax to help keep them waterproof and prevent them from going bad. We've got another aerial flare for distress to alert search and rescue and get a signal up out of the tree canopy. Next we have additional water tablets 
Small ones like this are great for our level two kit that was in our flick. However, the bottle that's in there, those take about 30 minutes to work. These are four hour tablets, which I thought was almost impossible, but they make four hour tablets apparently. So we would only use these for larger quantities of water that we can let sit out for a while and work for about four hours to treat that water and make it safe to drink. More first aid kit items, alcohol prep pads, and more of those Band-Aids as an additional resupply. And then lastly, just an emergency Mylar blanket. Orange on one side, green on the other, so we can make shelter. We can also use this as a larger panel for search and rescue. Highly visible, good to go. And that's everything in our level three kit. All right, guys, kind of a long-winded discussion and talk, but you can see how we have our level one items, level two items that go in our rack or our flick, that level one goes in our pockets, and then even level three, the items that are gonna go in our rucksack with the same contents you see here, then extra items and more of them so we have basically our own resupply with us. All of this is part of military survival kit building methodology, so we have items at least on us that we can survive and improvise with, as well as more and better items the further we go up our survival kit loadout, level one, two, and three. So I really hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment down below. All links are down below. I really appreciate your feedback. I wanna thank you guys for everything you do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.